time has come, the walrus said. All right, now that we're done with the second dungeon of the game, we got ourselves a hookshot. Uh, we need this hookshot to access some particular dungeons. I believe we need it to do dungeon 6 at all. I'm pretty sure we need it at some points in either dungeon 3 or 4. Again, do things in order. <laughs> some of these dungeons you can access early, and and maybe people like that, but just do them in order, as, as far as I say. Swamp of Evil, we're going to ignore the Swamp Palace for now. Um, also, there's another thing we need in the Swamp Palace that I don't have yet. Instead, we're going to head after Dungeon 3 next. And actually, I want to show something off here. Uh, the Dark World is pretty annoying to traverse just because of the strong enemies that do a lot of damage. So instead, we're going to go into the Light World. And, hey, wait a minute. We couldn't get back here until we got that hammer. We might as well see what's back here, right? Now uh, that we, uh, we got the hammer from the first dungeon here. What do we have back here? <gasps> Would you look at that? It's a teleportation spot to the Dark World. This is important in case, say, at any point you went into the Light World and maybe couldn't reaccess your uh, Dark World point you leave behind, your little trail here. Uh, and there's another one we need to go find north of Kakariko Village and just south of the Lost Woods, so let's head there now. Oh, it's so much easier in the Light World. Our Master Sword makes quick work of all the knights. We can ram on through everybody. It's just, oh, it's a joy. We don't got to worry about bombs or enemies stealing our items or anything like that. It's just... Boy, we got it good in the light world, don't we? You know, I talk about our trail back to the dark world being inaccessible. A lot of the times it's not just inaccessible, but it's also really far away. So these, these warp points in the dark world are important. You know what? I want to see, because I'm at the max money and I got nothing else to spend it on. I want to see what this guy's peddling. What do you, where, where, what is your sage advice you want to give me? Hocus pocus, you'll meet a strange man standing in the desert. Well, I mean, we already met him. Thanks, guy, I guess. Maybe he gives other fortunes, but at that point, I'm not gonna risk it. Actually, you know what? Speaking of money, I'm instead- I'm gonna rush all the way back to, uh, spend it all on the fairy lady, right? Yeah. Oh, there's ghosts in the graveyard now, just like the first Zelda game. How about that? A few moments later. Alright. I'm back with more money. I don't remember if I already had some left on her, like from when I was last year, but, hey, might as well see. Pond of Happiness. Oh, it's time. Time to waste more money on this. Don't worry, I'll skip past all of this so we can still get a dungeon done this part. One eternity later. Oh, uh, looks like I've reached the limit. Okay, 70, 70 rupees. Or sorry, 70 arrows, not rupees. I got rupees in the mind because I spent all of them. So 70 arrows, 50 bombs, that's the limit. All right, uh, that's all. Let's go back to the Kakariko Village Lost Woods area. There's something I want to do there. I wonder if these two guys who were working on the tree are done. Oh, they sure are. Look at that. They finished sawing the tree and they didn't even finish doing it. Anyway, there's a secret in there. <laughs> kind of a weird Easter egg. There, there was these two guys sawing this tree the whole time. And we could never get to the tree, but... Hey, now that they're out of the way. Piece of heart for us. Our heart level increased. How about that? Oh, we got fairies up here. Fairies, which I already have two of. I am thinking I'm good. Anyway, let's go up into the Lost Woods. And then we want to look for kind of an exit down out of the Lost Woods. Uh, it's nice that it's, this place isn't so foggy anymore. We can kind of see our way around. But where is the path I'm looking for? Uh, is this it down here, perhaps? No, this is a dead end. I think I gotta go kind of close to where the Master Sword was and then go down from there, maybe? This may seem a little strange what I'm doing to fellow newcomers, but uh, we gotta go down this exit here. Yes, yeah, so there is an exit. And, um, using the hammer we've obtained in Dungeon 1, meaning technically we could do this without the hookshot, we can find ourselves the next entrance to the Dark World. There's this block in the way that we can't move right now that also leads here, and this is just north of, like, some of Kakariko Village there. But we're gonna- we gotta take the long way to get here, uh, for both the Light and Dark World, because look at that. The same block is in the way. Excuse me, Mr. Ghost. But now, we're kind of in the Lost World, uh, or Lost World, <laughs> Lost Woods equivalent in the Dark World, which is kind of neat to see. There's no other way to get here unless you use that transport uh, just south of the Light World Lost Woods, so it's a bit tough to figure out. Oh dear, I almost fell in a hole. Also, this place is a little different than most dungeons as it's kind of divided up into a whole bunch of different entrances we have to get into. I'll show you, because we go along here. Oh, this must be the entrance to the dungeon, right? Well, yes and no. Yes, this is one of many entrances to the dungeon, um, but it's not the main one. There's the treasure right there just taunting us. We can't quite get it. And if we go over here, we gotta knock these guys into the hole. Oh dear. Uh, and then 
We can't go up north that way. We can pick up this chest with a map in it. Uh, we can see our current position. Yeah, uh, this place is a little confusing looking just because of how elaborate this one basement is. And then there's like a single block in basement too. Also, we can cut vines. Look at that. That's satisfying. Using the Master Sword in general is satisfying. I love it. The little blue glow it has, the, the extra damage and everything. Well, this is an entrance in the light world. Aha! Seems we found something here. We're once again in some part of the dungeon. Once again, we have vines we can cut. You stay back, you. <laughs> These things act just like the, uh... Well, kind of their equivalent in Super Mario Bros. 2, weirdly enough. That's a strange parallel to make here, but uh, you know, roll with me for this. Let's see what we got over here. Um, oh, I see what they want me to do. So, we have the little switcheroo button there. I don't know what, how to describe that. It's like a little star. We gotta activate that, but then immediately go back to this pathway. Also, uh, we... I think we need the hookshot to get over here. Is there anything important here, though? No, there's nothing important. Also, I can't get back now. Okay, that'll do. I guess if you hadn't gotten the hookshot at this point, it would just get you thinking like, Oh, I wonder how I get there. Uh, also, yeah, we still don't have the big key. You gotta find that somewhere else, I guess. Well, you've unlocked kind of the path there. It's just down this hole and through here. Normally here, you can just walk forward to kind of get back down to where we were. I believe we have to find another entrance to the dungeons somewhere else. You stay away. I do like the music that plays here in this version of The Lost Woods. Uh, oh! There's another entrance in the dungeon. Oh, we got Gibdos! Classic Zelda enemies. Oh, and... Those guys. Wallmasters. Pleasure to see you two again. Boy, you Gibdos take a lot of hits, huh? Oh, and you hurt like a truck. Oh my god, I'm at three hearts all of a sudden. Stay out of this wall, master. I don't like you. So we have a, uh, a button that's activated by pressure, which means we're gonna have to use one of these statues while the wall master's trying to get us, mind you. We gotta position it just right so we don't block ourselves off from the path. Oh, those wall masters are pain. If they grab us, just like in the original Zelda game, they'll drag us all the way back to the beginning of the dungeon, which in this case might just mean this room we're in. Uh, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> or it might take us back out of the woods. Oh no, it's just back here. But oh, the Gibdos are alive again. There we go. <laughs> yeah! My god, the damage they take is ridiculous. Got some health. I might as well see what's in this room over here, although I don't think it's too important. Another wall master in here, of course. Or ceiling master? I think they're all just called wall masters. Uh, and then a room with apparently nothing in it. Oh, that guy just got himself killed. Oh, there's a small key here. That could be important. In fact, I know of a few areas we can use that right away. No link drag. Oh, watch out for the wallmaster, though. I'm trying to use my, like, internal clock to know, okay, when is the wallmaster going to drop? It's going to be soon here. Uh, there he is. Just got to be ready for it. And I don't think we have... Do we have enough time to drag this all the way back without worrying about him? Oh, we do. All right. Uh, ooh. This Gibdo will kill me if he touches me. Oh, hell, that's a spell. It's turned me into a bunny. Ah, <laughs> I can't attack. It seems to negate the, um, big, the moon pearl, I guess. So that spell does. You gotta be on your guard for this dungeon, I guess. Uh, let's use a bomb here. And what do we have here? Uh, a lot of magic. I don't, I mean, I guess it's good for later. Right now we'll be fine. We're at full. Oh god, get this out of the way. There's gonna be a wall master in a moment. Okay. Now that I have the big key, I'm gonna go and get myself that treasure. These guys out of the way. And we have the fire rod. I didn't read that. My bad. Anyway, the fire rod works kind of like an opposite to the ice rod. Although the ice rod is kind of like a weird overworld item that's optional and like a <laughs> didn't have any build up or anything. It's But this is a dungeon item. This is important. You'll see why. <laughs> we have a particular use for it. In the meantime, we do have this one small key. Let's try it here. Uh, oh boy, Gibdos. <laughs> oh god, oh! Alright, I'm gonna try to get that chest over there to see what it is. <sighs> it's another small key. I had to use one to get to this room. What was the point of that? Hold on, maybe there's something over here. Oh, that's locked. We might need to kill all the enemies for that to unlock or find some switch. <laughs> that Gibdos just having a time over there. There we go. Anything? Uh, I don't think that did anything. We've got to push a block. Oh, you stay out of this. No. I'm not sure what this room's about. Uh, 
Maybe I would if I was better at this game. We did get another small key for going in there. It seems kind of strange, but we can use that here, I guess. And this leads to more Gibdos. No wall master in this room, it would seem. Thank God. <laughs> Look at this, I'm just getting through the wall. Oh God! <laughs> okay, there are wall masters here. They just take with their sweet ass time. My God. All right, and then we get another small key as a reward for this room. Is there a purpose to that? Oh, and then down here... Well, shit, we got the compass, but we made this room a living hell. Ooh, I almost didn't escape from the fire bar. All right, we're in a weird labyrinth down here. Is there a point to this? One of these rooms seems to connect to an older room we've already been to. Uh, there's some health. Any secrets in these walls? Was there a point to this pathway? There's no... It doesn't seem to be anything in this room. The compass is revealed, like... The boss is on the basement second floor, among other things, but I don't think there's any purpose to this room. You know, in that case, I think that whole thing with the key exchanging was just... Oh, yeah, it led back here. I think that whole thing was purely so we could get the compass, which is usually pointless in most Zelda games, uh, including this one. Well, anyway, let's leave this entrance and just forget this whole side area ever even existed. Because, yeah, we need to go to the real main entrance of the dungeon. That's just all... That's just all side territory. We don't need to worry about that. But now, how do we get to the main entrance, per se? Not up there. There's clearly a path out there somewhere. We can go around here. This is where we came from now. Do we gotta exit the Lost Woods entirely to get up there? Do we gotta go, like, out here, though? Okay, now we're into the equivalent of Kakariko, the Thieves' Town, I believe it's called. Alright, I'm gonna ignore the Kakariko Village right now, I just wanna see... Does this lead to the Lost Woods as well? Oh, well, yeah, that's the entrance that's blocked by that black rock. What about this way? This might be our ticket to where we need to go in that Lost Woods area. Hey, that tree's looking at me and I don't like that. Oh, he's, he's shooting bombs. Alright, get away from him. How does a tree shoot bombs? How do you... I don't know, magic, I guess. Anyway, yeah, now we're on a different path here in the Lost Woods. This might be where we need to go. Hmm. Yeah, there's another entrance to the dungeon up there. There's one we used, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was the one that led to... Uh, this... Uh, what did that have? I don't know. That didn't have the small key, did it? No. Okay, uh... Maybe we don't need this pathway, but then where do we go? Now we get to the part of the Let's Play I was worried about, where Jockey's lack of experience with this game just really halts the whole series. Which is why Earthbound is a huge risk, because when I get to parts I don't understand how to do, I just wasting time. I'm, get, I'm filling up my storage with gigabytes of recording and me just not knowing what to do. We do slip between these trees, I remember that much. But then there's nothing up here. There doesn't seem to be any way. Yeah, this is a dead end on this wall. There's no down passageway. We can go through here. Oh, hello. But then this leads back out of the Lost Woods, or whatever the Dark World equivalent is called. Here's the house. This is a, a shop now for bombs and potions and such. I never use potions in Zelda. I feel like the fairy just kind of like, why would I take the time to stop and heal myself when I could just let the fairy activate, you know? I mean, the potion is technically more health, I'm pretty sure, but also I may not like, die in the process. I may not get hit again in the boss fight that I'm doing, or whatever I'm doing. So then the potion could have been a complete waste, but a fairy will never be a waste, because it only activates as soon as you die. And, like, it's not like I used them much in the original Zelda anyway. I mean, most of the instances in which you could get one, you also were you know, given a heart container, which is much more useful. Also, uh, if you wanted to buy them, you had to do a whole side quest, and then you'd have to pay a whole bunch of rupees, which chances are you're saving up for the blue ring. I don't know, I just- I mean, potions in Zelda aren't my thing, I guess. But yeah, I just gotta- I'm looking at the map, but of course it's no help. It's, uh, it's just the tops of some trees. Hmm, I don't remember how to do this part. Uh, future jockey, cut to when I figure it out, but I might be here a while. There we are. Okay. <sighs> I'm upset that I forgot about that entryway, that you just leave through one of the areas you go in and then you come out this this other pathway, and that leads over here where we can use the fire rod that we got to uh, 
burn through there and make another entrance. Interesting. Although, how long did I spend on that future jockey? That had to be at least, like, 20 minutes, maybe? It's like, it's moments like that where it's like 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get through the dungeon or just get to the dungeon, in a lot of cases, where it's like, boy, I'm bored and I'm, I'm upset that I have seven more of these dungeons to go that could be equally hard to get to. Um... And stuff like that that makes the Dark World a, a harder part of the game to approach for me. Because I just, I want to get a move on. And like, I'm spending so much time just trying to figure out how to get to the dungeons. Instead of getting any story or getting to even play the dungeons themselves. I wonder if the Fire Rod's any good against Gibdos. Well, I'm about to die. But we got another small key. I believe we needed that. Uh, oh! It burns them alive. Good to know. And we also got magic back from killing them with it. Alright. Rush on through here, Link. We're close to death. <laughs> we're probably going to die, but at least uh, we're where we need to be. Oh god, alright. Um, Keep a close eye on where you're going here. I think we just gotta take one of these pathways to another. Oh god. Did I take the right one? I hope I did. I'm still low on health. Aha! Man, the fire rod is effective against these Gibdos. Very effective. It seems like it can only strike one at a time. And yeah, as you'll notice, it also lights up these candles, which is what we have to do to get through here, because A, one of them is far away, and B, uh, they do eventually go out, so we've got to be kind of quick. I'm going to wait for this one to go out, actually. There we go. They're out of the way, Wallmaster. we got to use our fire rod... Whoops. we got to use our fire rod skills to get all of these on in the short amount of time to get through the door. I like puzzles like that. Watch out for that spell link that's going to turn you back into a bunny. There we go. One of these is bound to have something in it, right? Oh, okay. I... <laughs> There it is. And then up here... Uh... Oh boy. Run away, Link. <laughs> Just get out of there, I guess. Um... Ooh, stay out of the way, you. I needed that magic. I also could use some health, probably. Down here we go. I don't think there's too much left of this dungeon. Oh yeah, this is the boss. Uh, it's a big moth. Essentially Mothra. And uh, it's in this arena where there's spikes flying all over the place. I think the fire. Oh god, okay, okay, good thing we have fairies. I think the fire hurts it especially. But yeah, the fairies are gonna bring us back to life. We have one more as well. But I'll keep that in mind that we need to catch at least one more. Oh god, lots of spikes about here. It's easy to take a lot of damage all at once. Oh god, careful, Link. Ooh, that projectile hurts. That projectile really hurts. Aha! There we are, the ground stops moving, thankfully. It's a bit of a disorienting fight. And with that, we've beaten Dungeon 3, finally. All it took was that one bit that confused me. And, well, we kind of wasted time getting the compass when there was really no need to. <laughs> Saying the same old thing. Do you know the prophecy of the Great Cataclysm? This is the way I heard it. If a person who has an evil heart gets the Triforce, the hero is destined to appear, and he alone must face the person who began the Great Cataclysm. If the evil one destroys the hero, nothing can save the world from his wicked reign. Only a person of the Knights of Hyrule who protected the royalty of Hylia can become the hero. You are of their bloodline, aren't you? Then you must rescue Zelda without fail. Uh, yeah, I got you. They don't really... Okay, I mentioned the last part how I wanted to do these in order because it was kind of important. But they don't really change... They don't add too much to the story. They're like, yep, Ganon's bad. He's the reason this is all bad and the Dark World exists. You gotta stop him. Triforce, Zelda, yada yada. You get the idea. We've still got four more of these dungeons, plus other stuff in the Dark World to go. 